What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's had a great Thirsty Thursday. It's been kind of busy. Um, I'm actually up in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. I've been working on a bathroom. Uh, it's about three and a half hour drive to get here and uh been kind of knee deep just getting started and feeling my way around there and i didn't actually shoot a video for this channel in here although i did for my day job um so i'm just catching up with everything that is uh the nfl and stuff one thing i heard a uh, shout out to my man dmb he shared this video with me of james T uh jay tuck jay tuck uh cfo sports um he's Kansas City, he's on sports. I mean, he's huge on Twitter. He has literally blown up and just, just, it's just sick of it. And it's kind of crazy because this is the kind of stuff that I've been dealing with for so long is there is, and he explains it perfectly. There is a narrative that's set that things that happen with the Cowboys or things they say happen with the Cowboys you would think don't happen with anybody else. That there's literally a trash the Cowboys player that they are getting clicks and making money and stuff off the backs of literally trashing the Cowboys. You don't believe me? Remember last year when Dak Prescott had 15 interceptions and led the NFL? All offseason, they literally, literally were counting interceptions in practice. Not, not, not the game, not the game practice and talking about oh my god Dak Prescott he's just a turnover machine you can't win with a guy like that and now we're back to the whole thing of oh man Dak Prescott you know you can't pay that guy you know he he doesn't deserve to be the highest paid even though I've been here fighting and I get all the trolls out there that say screw that guy he sucks you can't win with that guy stuff so if he were on the Buffalo Bills right now they would be so all over him about how great he was. If Josh Allen had the numbers that he had this year, they'd be like, oh, Josh Allen's the greatest thing of all time. But it's funny because they ignore Josh Allen's 22 turnovers that he had this year. Leading in the NFL. Leading the NFL. Yeah. That directly they lost games because of Josh Allen's turnovers. But that's how it goes when it, you're the Dallas Cowboys. And I said a couple weeks ago, Micah Parsons is becoming the Dallas Cowboys defensive quarterback because now he is target number one of trashing. So let me see if I get this straight. We have a guy who's come out the box, and I get it. We had a bad game in the playoffs, but came out the box, has had over 40 sacks in his career to start out, three-time All-Pro. He's the worst thing in the world, and we need to get rid of him. Do I have that right? That a Jesse Holly, no disrespect, who's got 200 yards in the NFL and got his start because he was on a reality show, literally said he is selfish because he's not trying to learn two positions. When most players have a hard time learning one position and sticking in the NFL. Listen to Jay Tuck. And Jay Tuck, I hope... Uh, and J Tuck, you know, we started working on the Travis Henry to the Cowboys. Okay, shout out to you. And I'm hoping, because I know you said you're 50 50 on whether or not you're going to the draft. I hope we are there with you, the draft, hanging out, because we're going to get into some trouble. We're going to get into some trouble. But listen to J Tuck venting. I'm just going to play a little bit of it, but this is J Tuck um, unfiltered, because he's just gone deep. Yo, what's up, man? We're not going to do no intro, no edits, no none of that. We're going to get straight to it, man, because this has been kind of weighing on me a little bit, and I've been talking about it on Twitter, but sometimes I got to use my own damn platform. That's where I realized I got a platform. I need to start using it. Now, mm -hmm. before we start, I'll say this. I have no problems with any media members. Like, I know them. We're not really friends. I'm friends with, like, a few of them. You know what I'm saying? Um, but it's not like I talk to them on the phone all the time or, you know, we hang out or go out to drinks and stuff when I'm in Dallas or different things like that, like I do with separate content creators. But I respect everyone. But, you know, in a I am getting frustrated, visibly frustrated with a lot of the stuff that I'm seeing when it comes to the Dallas Cowboys, y'all. And it's kind of gut punching and it's kind of like killing my spirit. So sometimes you guys got to get it out, right? So... 
you know, I'll say this. We all know he who controls the media mm -hmm. has all the leverage, right? This is why billionaires goes out and they buy media, right? Think about this. Elon Musk. Twitter is not a profitable business. You know, say so he owned Tesla. Got Tesla stock, right? He bought Twitter for a reason because now he can control some of that social media, right? Jeff Bezos, Washington Post, right? So a lot of these billionaires, they have control over media sources and media outlets because it allows them to manipulate and control. We're coming up in election year. It's going to happen. You know what I'm saying? So that's just part of it. So what we're seeing with the Cowboys that's frustrating the fuck out of me is that we are sitting back again letting the media dictate and run these lazy smear campaigns when it comes to the players. And it's so predictable, y'all. It's so predictable that I put out a tweet in 20 2022, two years ago, explaining to Cowboys fans what was going to happen to Micah Parsons, word by word, line by line, bar by bar, and here we are right on schedule. Mm -hmm. It's so predictable, and I'm sick of it. Today, I see an article comes out from David Moore that signing Dak Prescott to an extension is going to be more complicated. It is 2024, y'all. We have social media apps on our phone. We can Google. We have AI. We have all sorts of resources. You can no longer lie to Cowboys fans. And there you go. Now, we're going to piss in the office. You are insulting our intelligence. You think that a simple Cowboys fan can't go to Google and find out the cap space and show you how the Dak Prescott contract will work. So look to my guy Martin Talks Cowboys on Twitter. He's broken yeah. this down at nauseum. My guy, be, like, we've all broken this down. Like, stop talking to me like I'm stupid. And that's where I'm really getting pissed, right? So then there's this weird campaign with Dak Prescott, right? Yep. And then what we're sitting back and seeing is this shit with Micah Parsons. Mm -hmm. Now, Micah Parsons, since he's gotten here, correct me if I'm wrong, right? Remember, Micah Parsons came out for, you know, the Dallas Stars game and he tossed out the hockey puck. Oh, everybody laughed and it was cute and cuddly. Micah didn't know how to toss out the puck. Ha, ha, ha. It was funny because he was a lightning rod for our defense. No one had a problem. When Micah Parsons went out to the soccer event, nobody had a problem. When Micah Parsons at the white party, no one had a problem. When he was training with Andrew Whitfield, nobody had Whitfield. a problem, right? Remember, let's run this shit back. Wadsworth. You Cowboys fans, we did not want Micah Parsons on the podcast or on the show mm -hmm. on Undisputed with Skip Bayless. We sent those tweets. We told him that was a bad look. It Don't really be was. Undisputed, right? Because of Skip disrespecting Dak. He no-showed and started his own podcast, which we told him. And nobody had a problem with that. Yeah, the Lions started his own mm -hmm. show. But I now since we got me. dog walked by the Packers... Now everybody's in a goddamn uproar. And the crying and the bitching and the complaining is getting on my last fucking nerve, to be honest with y'all. It is. It is. It is. I see an article today. No oh, problems with like... Jesse Holly. You know what I'm saying? It's a phenomenal job. It is what it is, right? But sometimes, bro, you got to call people on their bullshit. Just like if it was DMV or the law it was boss, we press back. In our community, we press back. Nobody is safe. Y'all going to press back on me all draft season. Nobody is safe. So I see an article since Micah Parsons said that he wants to get a big physical defensive tackle and a linebacker. He is now throwing his teammates under the bus. Yep. There you That's go. That's what the article said. You can look it up. We all right? been saying the now, same thing. We all things. been saying the same thing. So, but now it's a problem because Micah says it. Now, let's walk back to last year. You had Micah Parsons. You had CeeDee Lamb. You had, hell, everybody to Michael Gallup. The list goes on and on. Oh, yeah, I would want OBJ. I would want OBJ. Yeah, man, I would love to have OBJ. I would love to have OBJ. Did anyone say that Michael Gallup was throwing Noah Brown under the bus by wanting OBJ? Nobody. Nobody. I sat there and saw today, and I retweeted, a Sauce Gardner talking to Jets fans about who he would draft in the draft this year with the Jets picks. There you go. Nobody batted a damn eye. 
But as soon as it's Micah Parsons, everyone has a damn problem because you're upset that we lost. I get it. I was there. Were these people there? They wasn't there. I was there. You remember the video? There you go. And, and he, Jay Talk, I feel, I feel you, bro. I feel you because, you know, I'm old enough to remember with the Cowboys where we had shit for quarterbacks, okay? That we were literally like the Washington Commanders where there was a brand new flavor every, every couple of months or so. We had somebody else in here and they were bunches of stiffs. We actually have a guy who's playing and we're not supporting him. And they're like, get rid of this bum. You know, in some regards, I almost wish that, that, you know, like Micah Parsons and Dak and CD, that these guys could go to teams that would actually appreciate them and would actually support them to try and win something as opposed to what we do. Instead of looking at where the problem starts, and he goes on to it further down in here, it's Jerry Jones. It's Jerry Jones and the crew. They do not do enough to win. You can't say getting rid of Amari Cooper, Cedric Wilson, Zeke Elliott, and not replacing those guys is a formula for winning. You don't win by subtraction. You win by adding guys. Now, I got some wings. I got to go eat. And speaking of wings, congratulations, Philly 500, on getting to 100,000. Peace.